In this tutorial I will describe how to execute surround view in ROS2. The robot has four fisheye cameras. One camera on each side of its body. By transforming and stitching each image obtained from the camera, we can obtain image that shows the robot from above. Obtained surround view image inevitably becomes distorted near the borders of the image. But this method is useful in various fields such as robotics and autonomous driving since surround environment can be observed with one image instead of four. Now let's take a look at theory. We will begin with camera calibration. To get good quality surround view image, we have to calibrate our cameras. Calibration is required because all cameras have some amount of distortion. There are two major kinds of distortion. Radial distortion and tangential distortion. Radial distortion causes straight lines to appear curved. Radial distortion becomes larger the farther points are from the center of the image. One of the models most often used to describe distortion is polynomial model. Here, X and Y are ideal projected points. K1, K2, K3 are parameters defining distortion. Tangential distortion occurs because the image taking lenses are not aligned perfectly parallel to imaging plane due to imperfect centering and other manufacturing defects. So, some areas in the image may look nearer than expected. Parameters P1 and P2 define tangential distortion. So, in camera calibration, we need to find these five distortion coefficients. Other than distortion coefficients, we also have to know extrinsic and intrinsic camera parameters. The extrinsic matrix is a transformation matrix from world coordinate system to camera coordinate system. R is rotation matrix which represents how much camera has rotated as compared to world coordinate system. T is translation matrix representing camera displacement from world coordinate system origin. The intrinsic matrix represents the internal parameters of a camera. It is used to convert points from camera coordinate system to pixel coordinate system. Let's see camera calibration steps. The first step is to prepare a chessboard. Chessboard patterns are used because they are distinct and easy to detect in an image. The corners of squares on the chessboard are ideal for localizing them because they have sharp gradients. In this tutorial, we will use an 8x8 chessboard with 2.5 cm side length of each square. In the second step, keeping the chessboard static, we will take multiple images of the chessboard by moving the camera. In this tutorial we will move the robot using joypad to do this. In the third step, Using the find chess board corners function, we will obtain coordinates of the corners of the chess board. In the final fourth step, we will find the camera intrinsic and extrinsic parameters using the calibrate camera function from images we have taken previously. Note that these steps described here are the general way to do camera calibration. Function to be used may differ depending on the camera you are using. Now let's do the simulation. As a base project for this tutorial, I have used this repository. Thanks for the author for sharing this great work. Download the zip file from the Google Drive and extract it to the home directory. Move all three models included in the models folder to gazebo models directory. Before building this project, we have to make one change to the code. Move to the RS Robot directory. Open the RS Robot SDF file. Move to the very bottom of this file. 
change this part of the code to your username and save the file. After this, move to the surround view ROS's directory. Open a new terminal and execute the Colkin build command. After build completes, open a new terminal and execute the camera calibration launch pi script. After the gazebo world appears, open a new terminal and execute the run calibrate camera Ross's script. Connect your joypad to the computer. We should move the robot so that a detected corner message appears. The window on the upper left side will help you to move the robot so that the robot will not be too close or too far to the chess board. After the corner has been detected 40 times, the camera parameters will be saved to the home directory. Note that for the real robot you should do this for all four cameras, since intrinsic parameters for all cameras will be different. After the calibration, we should rename this file according to where the camera was and move to YAM directory. But in this tutorial, I will not do this since we already have calibrated files in the YAM directory. Since we have obtained parameters of our cameras, now we are going to calculate projection matrix which will convert images from a camera to view from above. I will not describe the theoretical part since probably most of viewers are interested in practical implementation of surround view. But in the description to this video, I will post a link to a paper which describes theory of surround view. To calculate projection matrix, we should obtain images from each camera. Open a new terminal and execute the surround view calibration launch pi script. Then, open another terminal and execute the robot one camera pi script. Make sure that the robot is not rotated or moved from the center of the stage. Print screen the window. Open any paint program and paste the image we have taken. Cut the image so that its size will be 640 by 480. Save this image to the images folder. After creating images for all four cameras, move to the scripts directory. Execute the run get projection maps pi script. Note that we should specify for which camera we will generate projection matrix. For this, we will be using the camera argument. By pressing the enter button on keyboard after specifying four points, projection matrix and image calculated by this projection matrix will be generated. The result depends on scale and shift arguments, and parameter values defined in the param setting pi script. The meaning of each parameter is described in this repository. Also note that param setting pi values should be the same for both files in the surround view directory and in the surround view for projection directory. The right parameters can be found by trial and error. For this specific project, more or less good result is obtained by setting arguments like in this terminal. But still, there is room for improvement.
By pressing the Enter button, projection matrix will be saved in the YUM file which corresponds to a certain camera name. As a final step, we should generate weight matrices. In the scripts directory, open a new terminal. Execute the run get weight matrices pi script. Using projection matrices we generated in the previous step, a surround view image will be generated. If you are satisfied with result, press the enter button so weights and masks will be generated. Now we are ready to execute the simulation. Open a new terminal and execute the demo launch pi script. After the gazebo world appears, execute the run surround view raws pi script. Then, open Revis 2. Visualize the bird view result topic. We have successfully created a surround view image.